Hi everybody, welcome to another fantastic meal prep video with me, Lita from Back on Point. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make my favorite banana bread waffles, so stay tuned. So this is one of my favorite recipes because it freezes super easily. So you can make a huge batch of it, stick it in your freezer, and have fantastic waffles anytime you want them. You can pop them straight into the toaster or into the microwave, or just thaw them out in your fridge and eat them cold if that's how you want your waffles. So what we need for this recipe is some flour. I like to mix some white flour and some whole wheat flour. Some vegetable oil. Sugar. I add chocolate chips, it's absolutely not necessary. If you want to add some fruit or some chopped nuts, you can do that instead. We need three bananas. If they're starting to get brown, getting overripe, that is perfect. A little bit of salt. You will need both baking powder and baking soda. Some vanilla extract. Cinnamon. Nutmeg and cloves if you have it. You can leave the cloves out, that's fine. And you'll need two eggs and some milk. So to make this recipe even easier, we're gonna be making it in one bowl. So starting with the wet ingredients, we need to peel our bananas. This one's peeling two of them at once. Next, take a fork and mash those bananas up. So here's what those bananas look like now. Delicious, right? So then we are going to add two eggs. One cup of milk. One fourth cup of vegetable oil and about one teaspoon of vanilla, which I just eyeball. I bake a lot. And then stir all the wet ingredients together. So now it's time to add the dry ingredients. We're going to start with flour. So we need two cups of flour and like I said, I like to use half whole wheat and half regular, so I'm just going to do one cup of each. Then we add two tablespoons of sugar. Next up is one teaspoon baking powder and half a teaspoon baking soda. Then a little bit of salt, again about half of a teaspoon. And then it's time for spices. So of course with spices, use however much you like. I typically go about one full teaspoon of cinnamon and then nutmeg and clove just kind of a little splash of them because I really like cinnamon especially in banana bread my rule is always kind of you keep adding cinnamon until it smells like cinnamon so good hefty shake of it here's where we're going to start mixing our dry ingredients into our wet ingredients and let's add a little bit of nutmeg and some cloves the cloves you want to be pretty light with cloves is a very strong flavor so use a light hand for that, if you add any at all. Doesn't smell like cinnamon. So here's what our batter looks like now. Now at this point you could just start baking them, whatever you call popping them on a waffle maker, or griddle or in a pan, you can make these as pancakes, that's just fine. But I have a waffle maker and I love waffles. so. But if you want to jazz them up, you can throw in some chocolate chips. I especially like the little mini ones because they don't take up so much space in the waffle maker. I find that the normal sized chocolate chips or chocolate morsels tend to like burn on the waffle maker. This is also when you can add some fruit, you know, diced up strawberries or some blueberries or some chopped pecans or walnuts. It's up to you. Now that is some good looking waffle batter. Now, if you're planning on eating these waffles right away, don't worry about this. But if you're not, if you're going to stick these in your freezer and use them as a meal prep, 
have one or two cookie sheets ready and lined with either parchment paper or aluminum foil so we can stick these in the freezer later. But waffle iron is ready and it's time to cook. So after only a couple minutes, our first waffle is done. Look at how beautiful that is. I always say the first one is the one that you get a free taste test on. So now that our waffles are all done cooking, or pancakes, if that's what you made, it is time to freeze them if you're using this as a meal prep. So I'm not gonna go through the whole process of that because it's kind of boring to see, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay them out on the cookie sheets, which we already have prepared with aluminum foil or parchment paper, and then just lay them flat in the freezer. If you only have space for one, just freeze one at a time, but I would recommend you put the second tray away or you might be tempted to eat all of them. So just stick one in the fridge, one in the freezer. Freeze them for about an hour until they're totally frozen. You wanna make sure there's no overlap, otherwise they have a chance of freezing together. And then once they're completely frozen, just take them off the tray, put them in a gallon sized bag, get as much air out of there as possible, and stick them in the freezer. So that's been another episode of Fridge Full of Food Fridays, or in this case, Freezer Full of Food, because that's where I'm gonna be tossing these babies. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please leave uh, this video a like. Put down in the comments what videos you'd like to see me do in the future, or if there's any recipes you want me to do a meal prep video of, especially any recipes I've posted on my blog or on Instagram, stuff I make and stuff I made a video of. Uh, I'm gonna have the full recipe that I used in this video in the description, so check it out if you don't want to you know, try to hear me say all the measurements that I'm using, just check out in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a fantastic rest of your day.